Well, hello again, guys. Um, we are going to start with 2.1, Patterns and in Inductive Reasoning, because some of the classes we ran out of time with the test. So let's get started and hopefully not run out of time on the video. Um, okay, the first thing we want to talk about is inductive reasoning. All right, it's reasoning based on the patterns that you've observed. So think about it. One of the examples I used was like, it's been really hot outside this past week, right? So you've kind of made a decision that um, if you're a girl, you're probably going to wear shorts or a dress. If you're a guy, you're most likely going to wear shorts. I don't think any of you are going to bust out your uh, winter parka or beanies or anything like that. Um, anyhow, so you used inductive reasoning. Okay, here are t here is a mathematical example of inductive reasoning. Look at the pattern, what's happening? It goes from three to nine to 27 to 81. Well, each term is three times the previous term. So you look to the first term, multiply it by three, you get nine. Look to nine, multiply it by three, you get 27. There's a pattern, okay? And you've been able to recognize what the pattern is. All right, again, what pattern do you see here? We have a circle with a triangle, a circle with a quadrilateral, and a circle with a pentagon. All right, well, what happens is that each side, or each shape gets one more side the next time. So your next pattern that you could expect to see, or next shape would be a circle with a hexagon. And then down here, a conjecture. Okay, so, it's reaching a conclusion based on the inductive reasoning you've observed. So, what does that mean? Well, it's just a fancy way of looking at the pattern and making a decision. Being like, oh, well here's my pattern. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make a conjecture and say that the next figure will be a circle with a hexagon inside. Okay, so we wanna find the first few terms and look for a pattern. All right, I'm going to go ahead and show them all to you because I think that might make it a little bit easier. Okay, there's one term here, and you'll notice it's two. All right, two terms here, and you'll notice it's two plus four. Three terms here, and you'll notice it's two plus four plus six. And then four terms, two plus four plus six plus eight. All right, well, what a lot of people notice is that when you are adding them, you add two to the next term and so on and so forth. But what if I want to ask you for the 56th or 57th term? What you do is you'd say each sum is the product of the number of terms and the number of terms plus one. So if you've noticed, two equals two, and you would say is the sum, so two, times the product of the number of terms. All right, so times one. All right, we have our number of terms, it's two, and we would add one to it and have three and multiply those together. This is a little tricky. All right, here we would have three terms, we would add one to it and then multiply it by four. So if we had 56 terms, we would take 56 and multiply it by 57 to get that term number. Okay, so that's another pattern to observe. Okay, the other thing that I want you to understand is that even though you make a conjecture, they are not always true, okay? And the way you prove that a conjecture is not true is you use a counterexample. It proves a conjecture is false. All right, an example. What is a counterexample for each of these conjectures? Okay, if the name of a month starts with a J, it is a summer month. Okay, we want to find a conjecture, a conjecture, something to prove this statement wrong. Well, our counterexample is January. It's a summer month. Let me kind of see if I can get, and that proves that wrong. So we can prove a conjecture wrong with a counterexample. All right, you can connect any three points to form a triangle. Well, what if the three points form a straight line? 
three collinear points will never form a triangle. Okay, so the big takeaways from today. Inductive reasoning is um, we've observed a pattern, right? And the conjecture is the conclusion we draw from seeing that pattern. And we can prove those conjectures wrong using a counterexample. So, inductive reasoning, conjecture, and counterexamples. The three big takeaways from today. And that is it. Bye, guys.